Right, on to my next video, and basically I've got some that I've recorded before, and I've got some to upload, and they'll get uploaded as and when, even though I am recording more videos. And the purpose of this video is, again, it's another book review. Now, a book review on darts. Yes, I know, it is my favourite sport, apart from football. And I don't have many dart books, surprisingly. I've only, think, got two dart books from, well, three now, but the ones I've got in the past are just simply um, How to Play the Game, which is a dart book, which is how to play the game, and it's got all the measurements in it on where the dart board should be and when it goes down, or something like Know the Game, it's a sort of book like that. It's got the walls in at the back. And then I've got another book that came out around about 1981, 1982, something like that, and that's um, sort of like an old, really old dart book, which again is all about playing the game of darts, and it's got um, some bits of information in there about some of the dart players at the time, Dave Wickham and John Lowe and Eric Bristow and Jockey Walton and that kind of thing, and so on, which they're not really... Um, dark, dark books. I don't have any autobiography dark books. I don't have any, um, dark books away from things like that until I bought this one, which is a fantastic book that I've been reading. It's called 180 Fascinating Dark Facts. And it's by a guy called Patrick Chaplin. Now, if you want to know anything about Patrick Chaplin, he has got a website, which is in the back of this, um, book www.patrickchaplin.com but basically the guy is like a doctor of darts basically if you want to know anything about the history of darts absolutely anything about darts he is the man you go to because he researches absolutely everything he's the sort of man I would have to have a chat with you know because basically what he does I'm not saying he knows absolutely everything I'm not saying he's got all the facts and figures of every dark match that has ever been played, but what he does do, he does do a lot of research and find out about things connected to darts, basically like the history and all that. And he often, and he does this every month, he writes for Darts World magazine, the only official darts magazine for darts, any other magazine that's been published in the past or now about darts are not official. Darts World is the only official one, it's been going since the 70s, and uh, basically he writes for um, Darts um, World and he poses questions in there and people write to him and say things about questions and this is a brilliant book, it's got some absolutely great facts in here about um, Darts, basically if I go to um, certain ones like, it's talking about the First Embassy, um, which is um, basically before um, because, interestingly, as not many people would know know this, and quite surprised to think about this, but before the World Championship, the Embassy World Championship back in 1978, darts really only had two big tournaments back then, and that was before that, and they were not even like the, the big championships, they were more like a little bit lesser known as they are now, because basically they come second and sort of... Um, in terms of the World Championship. Surprisingly, they were the New to the World Darts Championship, and then you had, basically, um, the World Masters, the ongoing World Masters, which started in 1974, and have been going since. And it's quite weird to think that there would be a, a championship started, so you just think, right, when darts is sort of getting into its stride, and it's getting on the television, and you've got all your little dart events that happen, all around the world, and we come up with this idea that we want to have a unified championship or something where people from all over the world can compete in it. Rather than calling it a world championship and doing that, they've decided it's just simply a world masters, which isn't really like a world championship, it's sort of second rate now to the world championship, but yet they didn't think of it as being a world championship, and for some reason that became the first thing. You had the news of the world darts championship as well, which was a big competition as well. So there were the two big competitions that people really wanted to compete in and try and win and that was before we had 1978 when the World Championship came along and that um, it talks about it in there, you know, it gives you things like um, basically um, 
let's look at it like characters, characters of your various things characters live on. Um, why 5 by one Basically, there's some about why do they play 5 by one Why is it not 500 down? Why have they not gone for 601? Maybe whatever. Um, it, it tells you all that. And, um, it's got basically um, things in there like um, dark tuition by the experts because basically um, people who want to play darts and want to make a living out of it and so on. There's been many, many books and things written about them by people teaching you how to basically play darts. The first few, like Rupert Croft Cook, are people I've never heard of. These are the real older people, like A. Wellington and John Young and George Kelly. These are basically players who give you um, a bit of tuition, but they were from way back when. It's not until you get to players like Leighton Reese, John Lowe, Dave Wickham, uh, Eric Bristow, and um, a guy called Co Stompe from Holland who basically give you um, some tips, basically, on um, playing darts. I can't do the Co Stompe tip because he's written it in Dutch, sadly, so... I can't give you that one, but there are various um, selected tips in there by the dark players um, and that, like, the John Lowe one is um, safety, never fix your board to a door that is used for access unless you can lock the door when playing and never throw darts when there are small children around. That's just a tip. So, it's a great book. You've got lots of facts in there. It's got things like Walk on Girls, you know, the facts about when the Walk on Girls started, um, all of the, um, up until 2012, when this book was actually published, it's got all of Phil Taylor's big 16 nine darters that he hit in the um, various um, competitions that he played in. Surprisingly, not the World Championship. No, he never hit a nine darter in the World Championship, surprisingly, and never will, unless he comes back to dart, because he's now retired. There's... Bits in here about the royal family and their association with darts. Things like cricket. You know, the Americans and their way of playing darts. And one of their big games in um, darts is basically cricket. So, it's a wonderful book for anybody who likes darts. And I thought, when I when I saw this book, I thought, well, it had been in my Amazon um, basket for a long time. And I finally got around to getting it, basically, because... Um, it's just one of them great books that I just have to, I just have to have it. And there are other books out there that I may well get in the future because there is a few more dark books released that would be of interest. One being something to do with the, the greatest matches you've ever seen in darks. I know it sounds a bit mad to a lot of people who think, can you really write a book about that? But yeah, somebody's written a book basically with um, 50 greatest dark matches of all time which basically would give you a would, would give you stories about basically um what he considers to be the best matches that i've ever played in darts now it's a subject one because what's number one might not be number one to somebody else um i personally think with the pdc and the bdo that with a PDC and a BDO um, slash World Dark Federation WDF there's been many many matches over the years that are just cracking to um, watch and see and from the top of my head the four matches that I'm thinking about which I think are some of the greatest and specifically the last one being the greatest match of all time although I could say five um, is we've got Phil Taylor and Raymond Van Bardeveld in the World Darts Championship Final for the PDC when Phil Taylor won 7-1. Incredible. Incredible to think he can win 7-1. That was a good match. Phil Taylor versus Mike Gregory, 1992 World Final. Absolute incredible match. Uh, Keith Deller beating Eric Bristow in the 1983 World Final. Incredible match. Got to be up there. Chris Mason versus Martin Adams in the quarterfinals of the World Championship with uh, 
trying to think what year it would have been. It would have been about 98, 99, maybe 2000. I remember that sort of well enough to say that's one of the best start matches I've ever seen. Oh, and another one that comes to my head is uh, Ronnie Banks and Tananke in the World Final. We're talking about 90, ooh, 98, 99, or is it 2000? I don't know. Basically, um, Tananke won that one. But really... To end on this one and to say what the greatest dark matches of all time that I've ever seen has to be Phil Taylor vs. Adrian Lewis, Grand Slam of Darts, and we're going back to about 2012 or 13 or something like that. It was a made, it was a, oh, what a match it was. Couldn't move anywhere. It was like they were neck and neck until Phil Taylor ran away with it, but basically. What a match that was. They were peppering that 20. Look, peppering the bloody trouble 20. You would have thought you needed a new dartboard halfway through the match. It was absolutely incredible for um, basically dark. But they're my favourite dark matches that I've ever seen of all time. There might have been some other ones, but on the top of my head, they're the ones I'm thinking of. So, yeah, so it's a great book. I do urge people who love darts to uh, buy it and read it because you'll have Plenty of fun reading it. It took me about a few weeks to basically read it because I'm not always that quick at reading books and sometimes I don't read them every day. So a couple of days a week I spend reading a few pages and then that's what I basically do. So until then, on my next vlog, bye for now.